To understand the autonomic nervous system, we'll start with something we know relatively well already, the spinal nerve. So here we have a cross section of the spinal cord. We'll draw in the gray matter. And here we have the posterior horns. and the anterior horns where the motor axons are. And we'll add the anterior root, which meets up with the posterior root. And within the posterior root, we have a bulge, which is where we have all the sensory cell bodies, really of the body at that level, both sensory to the body, somatomotor, somatosensory, and to the viscera, viscera sensory. The two of those come together at the spinal nerve, which then splits into a posterior, and anterior ramus. Now for the autonomic nervous system, what's important in this region is that we have some connections running to the paravertebral ganglia, also known as the sympathetic chain of ganglia, running up and down on either side of the spine, all the way from the neck at the base of the skull down to the tip of the sacrum and coccyx. So here we have the anterior root, Likewise, the posterior root, posterior root ganglion, sitting right here, the spinal nerve, and the posterior ramus, plural would be rami, and then here we have the anterior ramus. Now, Within the paravertebral ganglion, we've got these two connecting stalks. One of these, the one that's most medial, is a gray ramus, whereas the more lateral is going to be a white ramus, for reasons that we'll see shortly. So if we're going to start with a sympathetic innervation, one thing we need to know is that from T1 to roughly the L2 or L3 area of the spinal cord, we've got an additional horn, the intermedial lateral cell column, or lateral horn. And this is where the cell bodies are going to be located for presynaptic sympathetics. So we're going to draw in a cell body there. Since these are motor, they send their axon out through the anterior root, joins the spinal nerve, and here what it has to do is travel to the paravertebral ganglion. To do that, it travels through a white ramus. White ramus because Presynaptic autonomic neurons are myelinated. Myelin is made out of fat, relatively whitish tissue, so it will be colored white relative to unmyelinated axons. Now, at this point, it can do one of a few things. It can ascend or descend, a level up or level down, or several levels up or several levels down in the sympathetic chain of paravertebral ganglia, and it can also synapse at the level it comes in. Now, if it travels up or down, it will eventually synapse at one level and then exit. But if it synapses here, the postsynaptic cell body sends its axon out the gray ramus. Gray because all postsynaptic axons in the autonomic nervous system are unmyelinated. Gray ramus is because those unmyelinated axons don't have the whitish, fatty myelin coating that's, that the myelinated ones do. At this point, if it's going to synapse in the paravertebral ganglion and then head out back to the body, it will travel through either a posterior or anterior ramus. And those axons and those postsynaptic sympathetics are fated to be pseudomotor, innervating sweat glands, pilomotor, innervating the erector pili muscles, or vasomotor, going to the capillary sphincters in front of the capillary beds of skeletal muscle, skin, etc., anything located in the somatic body. Now we get to a little bit of the more complicated issues. If we're in the thorax, the same thing happens throughout the first step. The first step never varies. You always have a sympathetic presynaptic cell body located in the intermedial lateral cell column. which will be henceforth called the IML, the save on time. 
from there it travels through the anterior root to the spinal nerve to the white ramus to the paravertebral ganglia. That never varies. But what does vary is what level of the body we're in. If we're in the thorax and we're going to innervate the heart and lungs, it will synapse with a ganglion, uh, uh, one of the cell bodies in the paravertebral ganglia, and it will send an axon not through the gray ramus but out on its own. And this postsynaptic cell body is referred to as a thoracic splanchnic. Splanchnic is a nerve that denotes any nerve axon that leaves a paravertebral ganglia without going through a gray ramus. And as I said before, this only happens in the thorax. It will join the cardiopulmonary plexus of nerves, traveling to the heart and the lungs. Now is where we get to have some fun. If we're talking about the abdomen or the pelvis, something related but different happens. The first step is always the same. IML, out the anterior root, spinal nerve, white ramus. Here, as these axons that are going to the abdomen and pelvis enter, they go into the ganglion and they pass through it without synapsing. So these are, for example, the greater, lesser, least, lumbar, and sacral splanchnic nerves. And that's named for where they come out of the paravertebral ganglia. Now these can go to a variety of ganglia that are located elsewhere in the body, but they all have the same name. They are all named for where they're positioned, and they are the pre-vertebral ganglia. And what's going to happen here is that these axons, these presynaptic sympathetics, will enter that ganglia, synapse with a cell in one of those ganglia, and if we're in the abdomen, it will follow the blood supply related to that to whatever organ it's innervating. So if we have a sympathetic cell body that wants to get to the stomach, it will pass through the paravertebral ganglia as a splanchnic nerve, probably as the greater splanchnic, arriving at the celiac ganglia, one of the prevertebral ganglia, synapse there, and it will follow that ganglia to the organ by going on the blood supply to it. So if we're going to the stomach, we could wind up following the left gastric artery. We could wind up following the splenic to get to the left gastromental artery. Likewise, we could also go down the common hepatic artery, jumping onto the proper hepatic artery and then to the right gastric, or common hepatic to gastroduodenal to right gastromental artery. It's not important to remember each and every possible branching pattern. It's important to remember the vessels, how they branched each organ, and that is the pathway that postsynaptic sympathetics will follow to get to their target. Now, next we'll look at individual levels of the spinal cord and how they contribute sympathetic and parasympathetic activity to each and every organ in the abdomen and pelvis.